Oh, but this one won't. This is Facebook. Yeah. Is it working? Hi, welcome back to Sip and Simmer with me, Anita Manager. I'm going to start tonight the same way that I started last night. There is a whole bunch of negativity out there, and tonight we are only going to talk about positivity and good things. We're all stuck at home, so let's all be together and be happy while we're forced to be together. Okay, so last night I got to talk about free mom hugs, and uh, tonight I would like to talk about the New Haven Pride Center. They are hosting Drag Queen Story Hours um, at home for the kids to log into. My good Judy, Lucy LaDuca, just did hers today. It was beautiful. She's hysterical and gorgeous. So if you pay attention to the comments, she herself is going to log in. Make sure you give her a like, give her a follow, and watch her story hour because it was super cute. Okay, so to start the sip part of the segment, I'm going to start with a lemon drop. And I've got my trusty shot glasses here all dosed out because we what? Love our mise en place. Everything is measured out and everything is ready for us so we don't have to worry about measuring. Okay, so first I've got my shaker filled with ice already. And I've got two ounces of vodka because that's how every single drink should start. From there, I have three quarters of an ounce of triple sec because this is a sweet and tart drink and we like that little bit of orange flavor. Now for the super tart part, we have lemon juice and we've got an ounce of that going in. And finally, our very last ingredient, which I'm gonna walk you through first. Thank you. Oh, you like my hair? I style it myself for my good friend, Sienna Rose, and you can find her on all social media at Sienna Rose Official. Um, now, back to the drink. I have simple syrup here. Simple syrup is something that you do not need to waste your money on. It is very easy to make. You do equal parts water and sugar, and you boil it until it's clear and you let it cool. That's all you have to do. I make it in surplus because I like to cook and drink. And I store it in a mason jar in the refrigerator and it lasts about a week or two. Um, so that's gonna be our last ingredient going into the mixer. Sienna, can you just make it a little bit brighter? Mm -hmm. And then you're gonna give that a shake. And we're gonna pour that directly into our martini glass. Today we're not as bougie as we were yesterday. We do not have any garnishes, but what you can do is you can throw a lemon wedge, you can throw a lemon peel, um, and just throw it on the rim of the glass. You could also do lemon juice on the rim of the glass with a little bit of sugar, or if you're feeling really spicy, a little citric acid. And that is absolutely delicious. All right, so we're gonna welcome to the chat Troop 429. They may not be open, but they are thriving, and we love them, and we are excited for them to reopen. Okay, so now, this part is going to be a little bit daunting for people because shoe pastry has a little bit of a, uh, uh, people think it's scary. It's not scary. Shoe pastry is really easy to do if you just take the time, measure everything out, and follow your steps. There's literally three ingredients to it, and it could not be simpler. You just have to slow down and take a breath. Okay, so in our pot to begin, first we are going to add four tablespoons of butter. And then after we add the butter, we're going to add half a cup of water. So we've got our fat and we have our liquid. So we're gonna turn that on, which we can't turn on because I turned off the stove. Okay. Give me one second. Talk about some growing pains, huh? Okay, so now that we're plugged in and my pilot is back, we're gonna turn on 
our butter and our water, and we're gonna make sure that it is completely melted. So, once the butter and the water are completely melted and incorporated, we are going to throw the flour in. And while we have a moment, these ingredients are not cheap, and I really appreciate everybody that pitched in yesterday. I did get to send Aaron to the grocery store today to pick up some ingredients for today and for the next few days. Um, so if you would like to pitch in and help pay for some of the ingredients, my Venmo is Anita underscore manager. Today we got to pick up the ingredients for the next three or four days, which is exciting. Um, we had a really good turnout yesterday and I'm really appreciative to everybody that showed up and shared and commented and liked and everything. And now tonight I expanded to both Instagram and Facebook, so that's exciting. So the butter is almost melted. Typically when you find recipes for shoe pastry, they suggest that you use a wooden spoon. That is kind of difficult for me and I think it's a little barbaric. I use a rubber spatula because we have the technology now where they don't melt. So it is a lot easier to be able to scrape into the sides of the pan and get all of your dough all going because once the flour is all emulsified, it is going to be really tacky. Um, and then you also wanna be able to chop it up when you're mixing the eggs into it. So this is all melted. So the water is nice and hot with the butter in it. And at this point, we're going to take our flour and we are going to sieve it into the liquid. All that does is it makes sure that all of the ingredients are aerated and the same size, so that way it's easier for it all to be bonded together. So from there, we take our rubber spatula and we get all of the ingredients mixed together. How many people got to get outside today, huh? It was so nice. It was a little cold, but in the sun, it wasn't too bad. I was inside prepping for tonight for most of the day, so I didn't get to enjoy it too much, but I did get to stand in the sun for a little bit. Okay, so once you have all of the flour really mixed into the liquid, it is going to look like wet sand. All right, everybody say hi to Lucy. She joined us. She's gonna drop that link for us for the story time that she did today. All right, so now at this point, we are going to let it cool down just a little bit because we're gonna be adding eggs. And when you add eggs to something hot, they scramble. So you wanna make sure that this is cooled down just a little bit because you still want it to be hot because when you're finished, it should be like a gooey, shiny ball. So, you need the heat to break down parts of the egg. I really don't do this for a living, so I know a lot from watching cooking shows, but I don't know everything because I'm just a hairstylist. So I can't tell you exactly what happens to the egg when you mix it in when it's hot, but it's worth it. So from this point, we are going to mix in our eggs one at a time. And you wanna make sure that you do it quickly Again, so that way it doesn't scramble, but also because you really want it to be mixed in while it's still warm. And this part is a little bit more difficult. You're gonna to wanna to smash and mix at the same time. So you get everything nice and mixed. Now, for the show yesterday, I had everything prepped like I do today, but I also, in this time, don't wanna waste anything. So this is important to really get it all done in one sitting. So I'm not going to pause and grab a ready done shoe pastry because we have to respect the fact that not everybody has all of their ingredients right now. And it's super important to use everything you have instead of bum rushing the grocery stores and just taking everything. Okay, so I've got that first egg really mixed in. We don't have any scrambled eggs, which is fantastic. Okay, and now we're gonna add our second egg. 
after you add the first one, it's going to be cooled down enough you don't have to go crazy and like kill yourself to get the second one in because it's not as likely to scramble. It's that first one. If you scramble that first egg, throw it away because it is not worth it. Again, I want to say hi to everybody and thank you for coming in. Hi to Macy and number three. Thank you for joining us again for the second day in a row. Okay, so we have our second egg pretty much mixed. Now, while I'm still doing this, I'm gonna tell you about working with the pastry. So this is like super, super tacky and it's a little bit difficult to work with in this part because you want to use all of it because it takes a while to make and incorporate it all together, but also because who doesn't want to eat a whole bunch of eclairs um, and fill them with custard and whipped cream and covered in chocolate. So that is all mixed up. Now at this point, Whenever you're handling the pastry, you're gonna want to make sure that your hands are covered in fat, whether it be butter or whatever. My little trick is I like to use Pam spray. It's easy to apply it to your hand and it's also super easy to wipe it off as you're going. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to take the pastry and I'm gonna get it out of the pot just so it stops the heating process. Okay. And now from here, this is where you are going to start to form what you're making. This is the basic dough for churros. It is, at that point, um, instead of baking it with churros, you would want to deep fry it. Um, or you can use it for like we're doing today. I'm gonna make eclairs and profiteroles. So I can't say that word. Profiteroles? Who knows? Um, so profiteroles are literally just ball size eclairs and instead of being filled with a custard, it's filled with a whipped cream and eclairs are more log shaped and they are filled with a cream, both of them covered in chocolate and both of them delicious. So from here, I'm going to get my cookie sheet and this part is important because you want to be able to get them off so from here you're going to take a pat of butter usually for a cookie sheet I use about a tablespoon I've been trying so hard not to waste paper towels because I have not been able to buy any in about a week so this is like I'm using gold right now so you take the butter and you just spread it on your um, silicone mat. So that way as it heats up, it's getting a little loud. As it heats up, it's going to melt and it's going to also help brown the bottom of your pastry. Um, but also it'll help remove them from the pan when you are finished. So I strongly suggest when you're doing this to do either profiteroles or eclairs because they cook at different times and it's really important for them to puff and be hollow on the inside and brown on the outside. Um, but the way that I'm doing it tonight is I'm gonna show you how to do both. So I'm gonna do them both on one pan. So I have my pastry dough here and I have a tablespoon. You wanna use something that is going to give you consistent sizes. Um, so that way they all cook at the same speed. Thank you, Sabrina. I just threw it on. I thought I'd do a little something for you. I'll make sure that my carrier gets all the pastries to everybody watching today. Okay, so after you scoop out your pastry, you have it dosed out in size. I'm gonna spray my hand with the Pam and then I'm going to roll it into a ball. This is important because you want them to look pretty. Um, they're going to be a more consistent size and more consistent shape. Um, and they just come out a lot nicer 
These are going to be very different than yesterday's. I forgot to spray my hand. These are going to be a lot different than yesterday's cookies because these you don't want them to crack. You want these to, this is a gooey mess. Um, these are going to be a solid shape. Okay, so now that we have that, I'm not going to wipe my hand off in between them because I can't keep track of what I'm doing. Okay, so I'm going to be able to get six of each onto the tray. So I'm just going to get the last three of the profiteroles onto the tray. These you don't have to worry about spacing too much because while they do grow, they more so grow up and puff as opposed to grow out and into each other. Um, especially considering how small they are. Um, if you were making them bigger, obviously I would make them a little bit farther apart, but tonight we don't really have to worry about that. Okay, so I've got the last profiterole rolled, and now I'm going to need a new dish towel because this one is gross. Okay. And that is why you want to make sure that you keep your hands covered in pan because it just gets absolutely everywhere. Okay, so now for this part, I'm going to reach back for my rubber spatula that I was cooking with, and I'm just gonna scrape everything down. Just so that way we can save all of the dough that we can. Okay, so from there, we're going to scrape down the walls of the bowl and create another ball of the pastry so that way it's easier to get into our pastry bag. If you don't have a pastry dough that you just took off the stove, and B, it is very thick and hard to pipe out. So you're gonna want to use a pastry bag. Even if you stop at Michael's or the grocery store and get a cheap pastry bag that you can throw away, if you use a Ziploc bag, it will break. Also, this is lined in plastic, so the pastry dough is going to stick to it unless you wet it down. So I'm going to spray a little bit of Pam in there, get a little bit of extra on the floor so it keeps my dogs busy. I'm going to roll back the sides, and I'm going to get the entire ball of pastry dough and slide it into the bag. So from here, you just give it a shake, and everything should fall down because you sprayed the walls of the bag. So from here, it's not gonna look like that much, but it should be enough for six eclairs. So for the eclairs, you're just gonna pipe little logs along your cookie sheet. And the same thing with the profiteroles, is you wanna make sure that they are roughly the same size so that way they cook at the same speed. Almost done with these. Okay, now to finish up our pastries here, what you're gonna to wanna to do is spray your hand one more time. And you are going to just shape and get, rid, get down any points or any angles or anything because they will burn. And while you do that, you can multitask, so. That is so tart, but with the homemade simple syrup, it really makes it less offensive to your taste buds because it's a lot smoother. Now, I am going to just finish this up. I'm not gonna make them perfect because we're waiting for the important part here. Okay, so I'm going to take these and I'm gonna put them in the oven. So when you put them in the oven, if you have a convection oven, that is going to be your best bet for these because it's gonna dry them out a little bit more. So with puff pastry, it does exactly, with shoe pastry, it does exactly um, that, it puffs. So once they are done, they should be completely hollow on the inside and just literally just a shell of pastry. So we're gonna put them in the oven at 425 for 10 minutes. After 10 minutes, you're gonna turn your oven down to 375 and leave them in there for another 20 minutes. Um, it's a high temperature in the beginning because what that's gonna do is it's really gonna brown the outside and cook the outside. 
and then it's going to really dry them out um, from the inside out when you turn down the temperature and leave them in for a longer period of time. So I'm just going to excuse myself to that side of the kitchen and get the other tray. Oh my goodness, look how beautiful they look. And they're already cut. So my trick for cutting any puff pastry is instead of using a knife, what you want to do is you want to cut it. So this is what they're going to look like when they're all finished. What I like to do is take my kitchen scissors, my scissors that I only use on food in the kitchen, and you just pop it right into the pastry and you just literally cut along the outside. When you're finished and you open it, it's a hollow shell. So this is what we're going to put our filling into. So this is a profiterole. So it's the little round ones. And this is an eclair. Now, typically in the United States, our eclairs are pipe filled. Um, in the UK and a lot of European countries, they're cut in half and the filling is put inside and then closed. So I did it that way because it's easier. So I'm gonna put these to the side and we're gonna start making our fillings. So I'm going to start with the easy one first because I like whipped cream. So whipped cream, heavy whipping cream. I've got a cup and here I have a tablespoon of vanilla simple syrup. If you don't have vanilla simple syrup, you can use a teaspoon of vanilla extract and a tablespoon of powdered sugar and it'll taste exactly the same. I like to use the syrup because it emulsifies a little bit easier and you don't have to worry about breaking down the powder. Um, so we're just gonna take a little work break. Breaking a sweat over here. We have some high powered lights going on and uh, I'm breaking a sweat. Okay, so from here, I'm going to get out my handy little immersion blender. And I'm going to plug my extension cord on that side of the kitchen because I couldn't use the stove after I unplugged the ignition. All right, so this is literally just going to whip. So I do it in a measuring cup when I use my immersion blender because it's just like a cylinder. So it just sits right inside and then I cover it with a dish towel and just give it a spin. The most important thing about making whipped cream is not to over whip it because then you're gonna be making butter. And butter is delicious, but it's not great for pastries. So, you're gonna do this for about a minute. just about there. So with whipped cream, you want to make sure that you get peaks, but like I said, you want to stop before you get butter. And that is perfect. We have whipped cream. And it's just the right amount of sweetness. The most important thing with Shoe pastry is you need to have a lot of flavor because it is literally butter, flour, and water. So if you don't have, nope, at the bottom, like you're taking a picture. Just keep going. <laughs> if you don't have a lot of flavor in what you are putting into the shoe pastry, it's just, it's not going to be anything. It's just going to be like eating raw dough, but cooked. All right. So now that we have our whipped cream, we're going to put that to the side. And now is the harder part. We're going to make a custard. Now, the big difference between a custard and a pudding is making it at home. If you don't want to make a custard, you can go to the grocery store and just get a vanilla pudding and you can put that into the center. 
The, um, the one thing that I would suggest is maybe adding a little bit of cornstarch to the vanilla pudding because um, it's not going to be as firm as a custard is going to be. Okay, so for this, you are gonna use your hand mixer. Maybe I'll get a strip extension cord for tomorrow. Okay, so here I have three egg yolks, three cups of milk. I have, what do I have here? I have a quarter teaspoon of salt, and I have a third of a cup of cornstarch. Um, the cornstarch is what's gonna bind it all and um, give it that gelatinous feel. Um, so what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna add the salt to the sugar and then the cornstarch to the sugar. And I'm going to make sure that I give that a stir so that way everything is all mixed up together. Sorry about the technical problem, Instagram. This is our first night on Instagram and uh, everybody and their mother is starting a live stream this evening. So, welcome back. Okay, so I have my dry ingredients already mixed together. And I'm breaking another sweat, so I'm just gonna take another sip. Okay, if you don't drink when you cook, are you really cooking? All right, so I've got my three egg yolks here, and I'm going to be smart, and I'm gonna remove one of these. And I'm going to whip them until they're light in color. Um, they're gonna go from like that deep yellow to almost like a mustardy color. And this should really only take a second, especially because it's in a small container. Okay, so once the egg yolks are really aerated, they're gonna be a lot more pale than they are raw other raw state. Okay, so from this point, you're gonna to start to incorporate a little bit of milk at a time. Now, technically in most recipes for custard, what they tell you to do is mix the yolk and then add a little bit of milk and a little bit of milk and a little bit of milk the whole way. I just make sure that I at least double the amount um, of the eggs. So right now for the eggs, I have about a quarter of a cup. I'm just going to get three quarters of a cup total and then I'm just gonna pour it into the milk because you're never gonna know the difference because you're gonna heat it up anyway. Hi, Ellen, thanks for joining. Okay, so from here, I'm just gonna add a little bit of milk at a time. And this is the part where you really start to see the color in the yolks change. And I just think it's really fun to watch it go from like a bright yellow to a pastel yellow. It's the little things in life, isn't it? That is all mixed. And like I said, I don't do this for a living, so I don't know what necessarily I'm doing wrong at this point. But what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna pour that right back into the milk. I've been doing this for a long time and I haven't had an issue with it yet. So if anybody out there can tell me why this is a problem, feel free to comment and I'll learn from my mistakes. So from here, I've got my eggs and my milk incorporated together and I'm gonna pour that directly into the saucepan. So from here, I'm gonna get that nice and hot. And like I said, yesterday the recipe was a little bit simpler. Um, so I was able to skip some steps and come back to it later. For a custard, the same thing as a shoe pastry, you really can't stop halfway through. So we are going to have a little bit of girl talk while I get this to a boil. I tried to get it to room temperature first, so that way you guys didn't have to wait too long, but you're stuck with me now. Okay, so I'm gonna clean up a little bit while it starts to heat up. Um, if anybody has any questions, feel free to comment. Um, after you finish with me and you go check out Lucy's 
story time at the New Haven Pride Center. I'd love to hear what you think about it. I watched it this afternoon. It was super, super cute. Um, so my favorite dish to make, um, so I'll tell you both. So my favorite savory dish to make is chicken cutlets because they are delicious and a little bit goes a long way and it's really easy to prep the meal um, and reheat it the next day. And my favorite dessert would probably be anything chocolate. Like I really can't pick anything specific. I love brownies, I love ice cream. Um, I don't know, I just, chocolate I feel is underappreciated because everybody just loves chocolate, but they think about it in like its pure form, but like everybody loves vanilla ice cream. Um, I'm gonna disagree with you. Yes, Ia, hi, welcome. It's like a family chat. Okay, so what you wanna start doing here is Make sure that it keeps on moving once it starts to warm up. And then you're going to, this isn't very sanitary, but I washed my hands. All right, so it's not very, it's not cold at all anymore. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna incorporate my dry ingredients in there. And then I'm gonna start to give them a stir. This is the part where you really have to pay attention. So this is going to start to thicken up really quickly. Um, when it does, but until it starts to thicken up, you're gonna be stirring just milk. So make sure that you pay attention and you get everything all mixed up. The hard part about mixing this is the fact that um, uh, the cornstarch is hydrophobic, which means that it is very difficult for it to be immersed into liquid. Um, so you wanna make sure that you really break it down and get it in. It, cornstarch is similar to cinnamon, how cinnamon doesn't like to be wet. It's the same thing, that's what hydrophobic means. So actually, a little tidbit about the rest of the week. So one of my favorite desserts, because it is full of chocolate, is um, Death by Chocolate which is a layered trifle. So over the next couple days, we are going to be making individual segments of the trifle. And then on the last day, we're gonna incorporate them all together. Um, so pay attention. So we've got three days of my favorite dessert coming up. And of course, my favorite dessert incorporates four different kinds of dessert. So this is starting to thicken a little bit, and at this point, you wanna make sure that you keep it moving. You wanna make sure that it doesn't get stagnant because if it starts to sit still, it's gonna burn because don't forget milk. If you've ever had a latte and it tastes a little more than sweet, it gets to that burnt part of the milk and it's not a very good flavor. That means that you need to yell at your barista. And if your milk doesn't taste burnt, make sure you tip your barista because your job is not easy. So we're gonna keep stirring this until it starts to thicken and we are halfway there. Um, the other thing that you wanna make sure that you do is you don't wanna whisk it too quickly or too vigorously because then you're gonna start to whip it and you're gonna get too much air into it. We're making a custard here, okay? So my favorite thing about a lava cake, somebody mentioned lava cake. My favorite thing about a lava cake is that you have cake and then the icing is hidden on the inside. Um, a lot of people underestimate how difficult it is to make a lava cake because it's literally just raw on the inside. Like if you're making a lava cake correctly, <clears throat> it uh, is flourless and it is undercooked, which is what that lava part is on the inside. If you see recipes that have like chocolate on the inside or whatever, that's cheating. Don't cheat. Do it the right way. Take your time, okay? We like lava cake. Don't do it a disservice. So, our custard is really starting to come together. Now, typically I would do it in a larger pot, but I needed a larger pot for the shoe, so I've got to stir it a little carefully. Okay. So we're starting to get thick here. Does anybody have any more questions? Huh? because there is a million and one things that I actually know about dessert. 
Um, because I eat it multiple times a day. Ooh, we're starting to get nice and thick. All right, so now is the, the breaking point of the custard. Once it starts to really thicken, you are well on your way. Okay, so my favorite drink. My favorite, this is, okay. So my favorite drink, Alexa is getting all up in the business. Okay, my favorite drink is just a vodka soda because it's nice and simple. And you can add flavors to it. You can add simple syrup, you can add grenadine, you can add orange juice. It's very easy. Did you want to enable it? Alexa, stop. Yeah, she is a nosy busybody. Okay, so once it started to thicken, I pulled it off the heat just to see if it was all done. And it is. Okay. So at this point, it should look like vanilla pudding because custard is vanilla pudding. Okay, so here we have, it's like the perfect consistency. So at this point, what we're gonna do is we're going to grab a glass bowl, specifically a glass bowl, because I've made custard and I put it into a metal bowl and then I put it in the refrigerator and when it came out, it had like a metallic taste. I don't know if it was a cheap bowl or if it was a bad custard, but I'm gonna blame the bowl. So, from this point, we are going to take our custard and we are going to get it into a glass bowl. That is a hot handle. Okay. So, once our custard is in the bowl, at this point what we're gonna do is we're going to flatten it down a little bit. What we're gonna do here is we're gonna make sure that it's all level because we're gonna cover it in plastic. And I don't mean that we're going to cover the bowl in plastic. We're actually gonna lay a plastic directly on top of the custard. Um, what that does is that prevents that thick skin from forming on top, and then you can really use all of it. And whatever little skin does form on top comes off with the plastic. Okay, so this is a very sad moment for me. That's it. That's all she wrote. Okay, so I want to welcome all the new people that joined us. So tonight we are making profiteroles and eclairs. So we have the dough or the shoe pastry already made, already baked, already cooled, already cut, and on the side. Right here I have a custard that we are about to get into the refrigerator. And we already made our whipped cream. So we're going to fill our eclairs with the custard that we made, and we're going to fill our profiteroles with the whipped cream that we made. And both, thank God, are covered in chocolate. And just like that TV magic, it's been chilled. This has been chilling for about four and a half hours. Um, I wouldn't do it for much less time. I was actually a little nervous that I did it so late in the day. Um, you want it really cold so that way it holds its shape when you put it into the eclair. So we're going to peel back that layer of film and that should be about the amount of hard, like chewy part of the custard on top of the bowl. So here we have our pastries. Okay. So at this point, I'm going to ask my lovely assistant who poured me a lovely glass of rosé. This is our house wine at my lovely bar that I work at, Troop 429. It comes in a can and it is just as delicious in the can as it is in the glass. That's delicious, thanks Troop. Okay, so. My assistant is now going to microwave five ounces of chocolate. Be very, 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 very careful when you're microwaving chocolate. It can burn very, very, very easily. So no pressure if you don't know what you're doing in the kitchen. Um, what you're gonna do is it's, it's, it's very easy to do. All you have to do is microwave it for 30 seconds, stir it. Microwave it for 30 seconds, stir it. After the second time that you microwave it, let it sit for a second, give it one more stir, 
and then if you see any lumps, microwave it one more time. You should be good with uh, three times. I've never had to do it four times, even if you're doing like a whole pound. Uh, the most important part is the resting. When you're resting that chocolate, you're allowing the ambient heat in the chocolate to melt the larger pieces that are still left over. So if you're using chocolate chips, you don't have to do anything. Um, just pour them directly into a bowl. If you're using chocolate bars, just make sure that you cut them up small enough. Okay, so from this point, I like to just use a tablespoon. Now, when I'm making my pastries, I think it's super important for size. Um, when I'm filling my pastries, I like to get as much in there as I possibly can. So I'm going to fill every nook and cranny with the custard. So I'm going to start with the eclairs. So, like I said before, they come out of the oven and that's what they should look like. And then I just puncture them with my scissors and I just cut around the perimeter and you've got a nice hollow eclair. So you're going to take the base of the eclair and you are just going, look how pretty this is. I'm going to, okay, hold on. Can we just look at how perfect this custard is? Okay, that sounded absolutely <laughs> disgusting, but I promise you it's going to taste so much better than it sounds because we eat with our mouths, not with our ears. Okay. <laughs> when she's funny, she's funny, am I right? Okay, so sometimes... If I'm doing a lot of them, what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill it with my pastry. I'm going to fill my pastry bag with the custard um, so that way I can get a nice even coating. Um, but also, we're stuck at home and we're indulging and we're eating everything. So you're going to get a lot of custard in there. I mean, you want it to look like a big fat sandwich. That is delicious. Okay, so from there, I am going to keep on filling them. Uh, if you want, what you can do is you can make a chocolate pudding or a chocolate custard. Um, as somebody who loves chocolate, as we heard earlier, um, that's a little much for me. Um, the puff pastry is your conduit to getting the flavors into your mouth. Um, and you're going to be covering these in chocolate. So to fill them with chocolate and to cover them in chocolate is just like way too much. My assistant is struggling. Um, I think I might have stressed him out with one too many varies, so I'm just going to help him with this melting of the chocolate. I think it was one too many varies for him. He gets a little stressed out. He's got a pill, it's fine. Okay, so I'm gonna keep on filling these while he keeps on melting those. And I'm going to take a break because this lovely house wine from 2429 is calling my name. That was the weirdest voice I've ever made in my life and I've made some pretty weird voices. Sienna, catch your eyes. Okay, thank you. All right, so I'm gonna keep on filling, as I've said 12 times. This is the fun part. So the beginning part of making these, I would say is not so kid friendly because you do have to pay attention. This is the kid part. You can really have fun with this and with the chocolate when it's wet on the outside of the pastry, you can cover them in sprinkles, you can let it dry and then throw some white, um, chocolate on top like drizzle it on top so the decorating is more of the kid part this time uh this making the shoe pastry i would really uh not have my kid personally standing over the stove stirring it but uh to each their own okay so i have finished filling my eclairs see this right here you would absolutely cut that recipe in half and not have any leftovers. But, custard is literally vanilla pudding. So I'm gonna put this in the refrigerator and I'm gonna take my leftover chocolate and I'm gonna drizzle it on top and then you have a third dessert. You're welcome. Okay, so for the profiteroles, you're gonna use a teaspoon. 
you're gonna take your whipped cream and you're gonna literally do the same thing. Now, the big difference between the whipped cream and the custard is the custard is set. The custard is more of a sturdy filling. This, you wanna make sure that you don't overdo it because they're literally just gonna get sloppy and fall over. I have so many comments I wanna make right now. Um, so, what we're gonna do is we're just going to fill, if you look inside of the profiterole, I don't know if you can see that. What do those stupid people on Instagram do? Is it like this? Am I doing it right? Can you see it? It's still Lie to me and tell me that you can see it. <laughs> awesome, great. So there's actually like a hole in the um, pastry here. So what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna fill that like I did here, and then just add a little bit more, so that way when you put the top back on, there's enough to hold it in place. You don't wanna overdo this because then they're gonna get really messy. And like I said yesterday, I like to plate everything and make it look super pretty. So we don't wanna miss our chance for that. So we're going to keep on filling these guys until they are all done. Now, usually with the eclairs, they have a, um, like a very even coating of chocolate on top. Um, and profiteroles, it's a little bit messier, and they're pretty much just coated in chocolate, and then the chocolate drips down, kind of like the anisette icing that we did yesterday, um, where you just put it on top and like let it engulf. You know, it's more about the shape, I guess, because with the eclairs, they're not going to really drip as much because they're not spheres. And that's just my take on it. I don't know. I'm not a pastry chef. I just play one on TV. Okay, so I've got one more to do. Like, can we talk about how perfect these came out? Like, that is the perfect profiterole right there. All right, so I've got the filling done on my profiteroles and my eclairs. Okay, so like I said, with the leftover custard, I am going to get my little jars that I've got here, or my little dishes. I'm going to scoop my leftover custard in there. Hi, new people. Welcome to Sip and Simmer. Tonight we are making eclairs. We are making profiteroles, and we are using all of our leftover ingredients to make a third dessert. So, I've got my leftover custard in the container. All right, so at this point, I have my melted chocolate because my assistant is just so fabulous and didn't burn a thing. Okay, so when your chocolate is finely melted, it should be, excuse me, very liquidy. <laughs> you know what? All these appliances around the house that talk back to you, you need to make sure that you unplug them because they are always listening. Okay, so. Um, I did not put any butter. I did not put any milk, no heavy cream. I put literally nothing in here. This is just straight up chocolate and microwave. Okay, so for the profiteroles, what I'm going to do is I'm literally just going to take my rubber spatula and I'm just going to drizzle it over the top of them, just like that. And that's it. So I'm just gonna make my way down. And the best part about not doing a ganache or doing any kind of butter or milk into the chocolate that you're gonna be putting over your shoe pastry is it hardens and it gives it like another layer of flavor, but it also gives it another texture. Because the shoe pastry is a little rubbery, um, just that's how they are. That's just the way they are, they're a little rubbery. And then you're gonna fill it with something creamy. So when you put the chocolate on top, it's gonna give it a little bit of a crunch once it hardens. And uh, trust me, don't make a ganache. I love my desserts. So, we've got this going. And also, like I said earlier, I would really suggest picking one or the other when you're baking these because you want to make sure that they bake evenly. Um, I got really lucky baking all of these at the same time today. Um, 
I was really nervous. I was afraid I was going to have to make a second one. Okay, so now for the acrylics, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take off the top of them and I'm just going to drop them right into the chocolate so that way you have like a very clean looking eclair. And then you're going to drop it so it makes a mess all over the place. Perfect. Awesome. Love that for me. Okay. So I'm going to keep on pulling these guys off and giving them the dip. Who's seen Roger Rabbit? Have you seen Roger Rabbit? If you haven't seen Roger Rabbit, you have a lot of time in your hands right now. Roger Rabbit was one of my favorite movies as a kid growing up, and they had something called The Dip. I'm not going to ruin anything for you. The Dip is not as fun as this. Okay. So, this one is, she's sealed. So I'm going to drizzle just like I did for the profiteroles because uh, I'm at home and I don't have a pastry store. Beautiful. And I'm just going to keep on doing that because my hands are getting messy and I don't want to have to clean the nails again. <laughs> She's lazy. Okay, so once you get the chocolate layer as evenly as you can on all of your pastries, you are going to come back to your bonus dessert, your custard in your container, and you're going to drizzle a little bit of chocolate onto the custard, just like that. And then you're gonna give it a dollop of the whipped cream. And just like that, you have three desserts. You have your beautiful puff pastries for your company. You have this one that you cry in the bathroom eating after everybody leaves. And it's been a very successful day. So I'm gonna get a plate so I can put all this out there for you and show you when it's all done. Apparently the staff wasn't paying attention when I said I wanted a plate that wasn't white. But we'll move on. So I'm going to plate them as neatly as I can because I'm a sloppy person. See, I spoke too soon. Okay, so I've got the profiteroles on one side and I'm gonna get the eclairs on the other. Thank God I don't have to dry clean this dress because I'm about to get chocolate everywhere. Everybody give a warm welcome to Robin. She's new to the baking world. Can we all give her a round of applause for making her own dinners now? You hear how sad that applause was? <laughs> I'm not alone. There is a lot of people here. Robin, step your game up. They are not impressed. My goodness. Okay, so this looks a little bit messier than I would like, but that is how you make a delicious shoe pastry. We have the eclairs filled with a custard, we have the profiteroles filled with the whipped cream, and we have our bonus dessert. Thank you again, everybody, for joining me tonight. Again, my Venmo is Anita underscore manager, and all of the proceeds will absolutely go to being able to make more delicious drinks and more delicious desserts. Um, again, another shout out to Troop 429 and their house wine. It is delicious. Another shout out, oh, excuse me, I'm too big of a sip. Another shout out to New Haven Pride Center and doing their at home story times. You can check out today's uh, story time with Lucy LaDuca on her Instagram and Facebook, along with New Haven Pride Center's Facebook. Um, my Instagram handle is Mrs. Anita Manager. You can find me on Facebook at Mrs. Anita Manager. And you can find me at Venmo at Anita underscore Manager. Thanks again for stopping by my kitchen today for another Sip and Simmer, and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Thanks. Me. Who's hungry? Where's the, Where's the stop button? I don't know. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Where's the button? Kristen, did you it's here. It? Where? It's up here. Oh. oh.